Continuation of Chapter 4 Laicity of the State and the Struggle Against the Church Quote, For this same reason they declare to the people and contend that the Church and State ought to be altogether disunited. End quote. As a consequence of their naturalism, the Freemasons preach the secularization of the State, church and state must be separated, dogmas and objective truth eliminated. To bring it about, they will influence the instruction dispensed by the state in public schools and in universities. Thereby, they will secularize minds and souls and infiltrate their relativist ideas, which practically lead to the suppression of God. Leo XIII specifies, Quote, Nor do they think it enough to disregard the church, the best of guides, unless they also injure it by their hostility. End quote. The least possible liberty to manage affairs is left to the church, and this is done by laws not apparently very hostile, but in reality framed and fitted to hinder freedom of action. Moreover, we see exceptional and onerous laws imposed upon the clergy, to the end that they may be continually diminished in number and necessary means. The clergy will be forced to serve in the military. The stranglehold of the state on the property of the church will deprive the clergy of the means to create and support schools and works of charity. Quote, we see also the remnants of the possessions of the church fettered by the strictest conditions and subjected to the power and arbitrary will of the administrators of the state." End quote. Second Principle Indifferentism The second principle of the Freemasons is indifferentism, a necessary consequence of naturalism, but which is still a distinct principle. Indifferentism is a word that occurs frequently in the pontifical documents. It has a precise meaning. Indifferentism postulates and propagates the idea that all the religions are equal, that there is none which is worth more than the other. Quote, As all who offer themselves are received, whatever may be their form of religion, they thereby teach the great error of this age, that a regard for religion should be held as an indifferent matter, and that all religions are alike. This manner of reasoning is calculated to bring about the ruin of all forms of religion, and especially of the Catholic religion, which, as it is the only one that is true, cannot without great injustice be regarded as merely equal to their religions." End quote. This tenor of language is no longer spoken. After Vatican II, it disappears. As for Leo XIII, he affirms quite rightly that it is impossible to put error and truth on the same level. Third Principle Denial of the Existence of God and the Immortality of the Soul The Pope comments on this principle. Quote, they no longer consider as certain and permanent those things which are fully understood by the natural light of reason, such as certainly are the existence of God, the immaterial nature of the human soul and its immortality. Neither do they conceal that this question about God is the greatest source and cause of discords among them. End quote. If the Freemasons speak of the great architect, it does not mean that they believe in the existence of God. Ultimately, for them, the great architect signifies the forces of nature that uphold the existence of the world 
but that in no wise means a personal God who created, governs, and maintains the world in existence. On the contrary, it is rather a form of pantheism, as Leo XIII says, quote, When this greatest fundamental truth has been overturned or weakened, it follows that those truths also which are known by the teaching of nature must begin to fall, end quote. The consequence of these denials is the disappearance of the most vital truths. Quote, when these truths are done away with, which are as the principles of nature and important for knowledge and for practical use, it is easy to see what will become of both public and private morality. We say nothing of those more heavenly virtues which no one can exercise or even acquire without a special gift and grace of God, of which necessarily no trace can be found in those who reject as unknown the redemption of mankind, the grace of God, the sacraments, and the happiness to be obtained in heaven. We speak now of the duties which have their origin in natural probity, that God is the creator of the world and its provident ruler, that the eternal law commands the natural order to be maintained and forbids that it be disturbed, that the last end of men is a destiny far above human things and beyond this sojourning upon the earth. These are the sources and these the principles of all justice and morality. If these be taken away, as the naturalists and Freemasons desire, there will immediately be no knowledge as to what constitutes justice and injustice, or upon what principle morality is founded. And in truth, the teaching of morality which alone finds favor with the sect of Freemasons, and in which they contend that youth should be instructed, is that which they call civil and independent and free, namely, that which does not contain any religious belief. End quote. Nowadays, one would say, quote, permissive morality.